In our last video, we took a look at the natural tendency of people in prosperity to have pride, to be proud. They're proud of their prosperity. They take credit for it. Therefore, that leads to sin. And we've gone all the way around the circle from righteousness to sin because he blessed us. The most ridiculous thing about Heavenly Father's children. So before we get into anecdotes, let's see if we can define what we mean by pride. If you say you're proud of your country or you're proud of your children, is it the same thing as is being condemned in the Book of Mormon? What is the pride we need to watch out for? Let's define that. Let's see if we can put some flesh on those bones to say that's the problem. Doing that is the problem. And that's when we begin to show our pride and then that leads to sin. So again, we're going to turn to another part of the Book of Mormon. I love Helaman and Helaman is raising the arm saying in the latter days, prosperity, pain, pride are going to be major players. And if you want to succeed in the latter days, you need to find the shortcut that goes to humility in both prosperity and pain. I'm doing it backwards. I'm looking at it, but you're looking at it. You need to find the shortcut that goes from prosperity to humility and from pain to humility. But before we do that, let's define pride. Let's use the Book of Mormon to define pride. Let's turn to Jacob chapter 2, Jacob's great sermon on pride. For me, one of the great blessings of chapter 2 is I find in it, in one little verse, in my opinion, the very best definition of the problem. I think verse 13 defines the problem. So take a look at verse 13 and tell me what word do you suppose is the starting point of the problem? Now, this verse talks about abundance. You have an abundance. So is having an abundance the problem? Is pride naturally because you have an abundance? Well, didn't Jesus have an abundance of many things? He was clearly smarter than all of us, but he wasn't proud. Abundance isn't necessarily the problem. Looking at this verse, I would suggest to you that the problem is this word right here, more. More suggests that there's a comparison, that I have more than you. That, I believe, is the birth of pride. That's where pride becomes a problem. I don't think feeling proud to be an American or being proud of my children and what they've accomplished is really the problem. The problem is the comparison. My country's better than your country. My children are smarter than your children. And the comparison is the problem. I have more than you. And so at this verse, he's condemning us for thinking we have more. I love that C.S. Lewis picked up on that. C.S. Lewis said it this way. Pride gets no pleasure out of having something only out of having more of it than the next man. We see that people are proud of being rich or clever or good looking, but they are not. They are proud of being richer or cleverer or better looking than others. If everyone else became equally rich or clever or good looking, there would be nothing to be proud about. It is the comparison that makes you proud the pleasure of being above the rest. Once the element of competition is gone, pride is gone. And I think that's such a powerful concept that it's the comparison that's the problem. I have more than you. So would you ponder in a, in a moment of Lord is it I, what is your more? What do you have more of? Because whatever it is, that's going to be your source of pride. That's going to be the most susceptible you will ever be to pride. What you have more of. People who have more money will focus on, I have more money. But that's not the only source of a more. 
Unfortunately, we see a lot of people in the church who are proud of their righteousness. I am more righteous than you are. Therefore, they have pride. Whatever it is, I have more followers on social media. I have more talent in a particular sport. I am better looking. I have better grades. I have more children. My children have accomplished more than your children. Whatever the source is, whatever the more is, that's where you're going to be proud. I have more. I think that's the beginning. The beginning of pride is I have more than you do. Now back to Jacob chapter two, verse 13. What is natural? What happens when you have more? I think our second word, we jump to the end of the verse. Now look at that, that ending. Because I have more, I think I'm better. That's our second word. Because I have more, I think I'm better. Whatever the more. If you see yourself as having more righteousness than someone else, your tendency is to think that you're better. I'm better because I'm more righteous than you are. I'm better because I have accomplished something that you haven't accomplished. I'm better. I have more money. I'm better because I'm smarter. I'm better because I'm prettier. Now, those who see a more and think they're better are going to do what? Going to the middle of this verse, back in Jacob chapter 2, verse 13, if you think you're better, you are going to persecute your brethren. You're going to find a way to persecute, to jab them, to throw it in their face that I have something that you don't, which makes me better. People who have more money and think they're better often buy products that other people can't buy and deliberately persecute them with those things. I'm going to buy a car that you can't afford and I'm going to drive it around so that you can see me driving it so that you know that I'm better than you. It's a form of persecution. People who are physically bigger, they're stronger. I have more muscles than you do. Therefore, I'm better. I will physically hurt you. I will push you down. That's a form of persecution. People who have more righteousness and think they're more righteous and think they're better because they're more righteous will constantly be saying things in judgment of others. That's how they persecute. Those three words, I believe, are the problem. I have more, therefore I think I'm better, and I'm going to make sure you know it by persecuting you. Now, pride comes in all sorts of forms. Sometimes it comes in the form of you have more, therefore I think you're better, and I'm going to persecute myself. That is not humility. That is the same thing. It's more, better, persecute. But you're persecuting yourself. It's pride. If you're constantly tearing yourself down, that's not humility. That's a form of pride. It's more, better, persecute. Do you recognize this character, our beloved Sneetches? I love this story from Dr. Seuss. I think he caught the vision and wrote a beautiful commentary on human nature. He talks about a group of Sneetches who have stars on their belly. And then there's a group of Sneetches who don't. They don't have stars on their belly. Now, how do this group with stars treat the ones without? Because I have a star and you don't, there's the more. I'm better than you, and I'm going to make sure you know it. So they don't invite them to their Frankfurter roasts. They don't play with them on their beaches. Their sons can't play, their children can't play in their sports. They persecute them by excluding them because you don't have a star on your belly. 
Then along comes someone to take advantage of our pride. Sylvester McMonkey McBean comes along and builds a machine that puts the star on their belly. Now, once you've had a taste of having more, the way C.S. Lewis said, the pleasure of being above someone else. Once you've had a taste of having more, are you suddenly going to say, oh, okay, well, now that we all have stars, everyone's the same? No. So Sylvester McMonkey McBean offers them a trip through his machine, but this time he's going to take off the star. And this is where it gets ridiculous. Now the people who don't have stars walk around with their snoots in their air, boasting that they're better. They're bragging because they're now the people that they were making fun of in the beginning of the book. Do you see how silly this game is? The whole point of Dr. Seuss's book is that no one wins this game. They give all their money to Sylvester McMonkey McBean because they're trying to win this silly game that no one wins. Finally, in the end, when all of them have spent their money and McBean gathers up all their money and he laughs at them when he drives up the beach, there's this beautiful scene in Dr. Seuss's The Sneetches. I'm going to read it. But McBean was quite wrong, I'm quite happy to say, that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. I think Dr. Seuss was brilliantly pleading what the Book of Mormon is pleading. When are we going to wake up and be smarter than the, as smart as these sneetches? When are we going to learn the lesson of the sneetches? That I'm not better because I have more. I'm not better because I have something that you don't have. Because the reality is you have something that I don't have. Pride is destroying us. Pride is destroying the church. Pride is destroying families and marriages. And if the Book of Mormon is saying what I believe it's saying, the latter days, the fight to succeed and, and, and find and be successful is to overcome pride. We must overcome our natural tendency to have something that someone else doesn't have and notice the comparison and then conclude I'm better and make sure I persecute. I think that's the enemy we are fighting in our lives and in these latter days. Now let's come back in our next video and we'll talk about antidotes. Antidotes to pride. I love this verse in Alma chapter 15. After the destruction of Ammoniah, where the women and the children were burned. Now, clearly that was an act of pride. Someone thought they were better and they persecuted in a severe way by burning the women and the children. After that was over, Alma goes to Sidon and he's not going to let it happen again. And so I love this verse in verse 17. After Alma having established the church at Sidon, Seeing a great check, yea, seeing that the people were checked as to the pride of their hearts. Now, that's what we want to accomplish in our next video. If pride is one of the challenges of our day, how do we establish a great check? How do we check ourselves as to the pride of our hearts? We're going to go back to Helaman. We'll take a look at all the different portions of the Book of Mormon. But if Helaman is saying this is the problem of our latter days, one of the great solutions is to read in the Book of Mormon the antidotes to pride. Come back and we'll tackle that in our next video. I bear you my testimony that God is begging us to shortcut through the pride cycle and avoid pride, sin, and pain. We can do it 
The answers are there. The answers are in this book. Oh, how I love this Book of Mormon. I believe it was written for our day and solves the challenges that we're facing today, like pride. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.